Hey guys, it's Carter. Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we are going to be talking about the top 10 reasons why swing traders fail in the stock market. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. If you guys do, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you guys are like, who is this random guy on YouTube? My name is Carter. I'm actually a full-time trader in the stock market. And with that being said, we do have an amazing school where we teach people how to trade. That's the biggest thing is I don't believe in alerts. I think you should be the one to find your opportunity to, to find your strategies that work well for you and all that stuff. And I teach you my strategy, teach you how I find stocks, but it's your job to implement it. So guys, check that out. You guys can use code YouTube to get 20% off. All caps, check it out down below. But let's kind of just jump into this here. So swing trading, what is it? Well, in simple terms, swing trading is when you buy a stock, you hold it for more than a day, but less than one year. When you buy and sell, a, when you buy and sell a stock, and you know during the same trading day, that's considered a day trade. It's a different type of strategy, different mindset, all that stuff. Now, when you buy a stock and you hold it for more than one year, that's a long-term investment. So, guys, swing trading on average, I do hold my positions for anywhere from about six days to about nine days on average. And yes, there will be times where I buy a stock today and sell tomorrow. There will be, you know, it's just generalized, right? On average, six to nine days. But so starting off here, what are some reasons why swing traders fail? So starting off with number one, this is probably the most, one of the most important ones. And this is lack of a defined strategy. So one of the things here is a lot of people think they just buy random stocks, right? At least when I first started, I just thought you picked any stock out there and you just bought it. But that is not the case. Swing trading, actually, you find stock that meets your strategy and you implement scanners that find those, um, you know, with, with certain criteria. So without a solid plan in place, traders, um, you know, start making decisions on emotion, on impulsive. And what that what that causes is inconsistent results. And yes, the 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 issue that I see when people don't have a defined strategy is they may make money a couple of times. Because when you buy a stock, really, there's a 50-50 chance that that could go up. And so when you buy a stock, you could make several trades and make money, but to do it consistently for the long run, that's where I see the biggest issue. The next one here, moving on to number two here, is ignoring risk management. Risk management is super important when it comes to swing trading. Some traders overlook this um, you know, aspect and expose themselves to excessive risk by over leveraging their positions and not setting stop loss orders. When you buy a stock here and you, you think this thing, first of all, is gonna always go up. You have so much confidence in the world, you hop into it, you have no risk management. You don't understand that you're risking a dollar to make 10 cents or whatever it may be. You know, So you always should have your stop loss, your entry, your exit, your profit, everything planned before you ever take a trade. It's like a football team. You know, It's like a football team without having a defense. You're gonna lose. Maybe you may score some touchdowns, but you're gonna lose. All right, moving on to number three. Number three here is failing to adapt to market conditions. Swing traders who um, rigor, they, they only stick to that strategy no matter what, regardless of market conditions, they may struggle. And the reason why this is, is successful swing traders adapt their strategies to evolve market conditions. What this means is if we see the stock market getting absolutely obliterated you know, we're, we're in a recession or a crash or a consolidating market, maybe you need to start taking profit a little sooner. Maybe you need to move that stop loss up. Just like the stock market changes, your strategy should change. And that's, that's super important there. But moving on to number four. Number four is not doing prop, proper research. So this could be a variety of things from fundamental analysis to technical analysis, um, from failing to uh, you know, do 
you know, research before entering a trade can definitely result in poor decision making. So for me, I never hold during earnings. I think that earnings are a 50-50 chance of blowing up an account or making a ton of money. So I never do it. I think it's incredibly risky. Now, there has been times when I first started trading when I didn't pay attention to this. What this caused me to do is lose a bunch of money. When the company comes out and they miss their earnings, the stock in most certain, you know, in most instances gets annihilated. And, and I, I can't stress that enough. Do proper research. That's why, you know, that's why paper trading is so incredibly important. Paper trading, using simulated money to practice your strategies, your mindset, you know, your entries, your exits, your risk management skills is very, very important. So make sure you guys understand that. Do your proper research before ever making a trade. Moving on to number five, this is very, very common, overtrading. Overtrading occurs when traders uh, trade too many positions, often based on emotions rather than careful analysis. Uh, you know, this is this can lead to increase, uh, you know, increased fails. This could be, you know, uh, reduced focus and overall reduced profitability. Now, now overtrading. One of the, one of the biggest reasons I see people over trade is when they lose money and they think, how can I get this back? I need to get this back today. No, no, you don't. <laughs> I hate to say it. all traders lose money. What, what you need to do is look at that loss as an opportunity to learn. What could you have done from it to, uh, you know, make money on it or maybe, you know, not, a, not lost as much money, all that stuff. Is super important. All right, moving on to number six, number six is letting emotions drive very uh drive decisions uh emotional trading is such a you know such a very very important with with trading you know people have so many emotions when it comes with trading they have fomo they have uh you know fol which is fear of losing um and all those can cloud judgment and lead to poor decision making Success successful swing traders maintain discipline and follow their trading plans regardless of emotions so you know during that time where amc and gamestop were skyrocketing up everybody was making money it was great it was great it was great I kept telling myself not to hop in. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You got to maintain that control. That is not my strategy. Yes, I could make money on it, but that is not the trader I am, and I wouldn't recommend even chasing stocks. So uh, we'll talk about more with chasing you know, positions here in a second. But all right, moving on to number seven here is ignoring stop losses. This is super important to you know risk management, like we kind of already, already talked about, but some swing traders pretty much neglect to use stop loss orders. Um, they ignore them once the trade is initiated, which can pretty much result in significant loss if their trade moves against them very fast. Just as fast as a stock goes up, it can go down. And that's the thing. You always need to have have a plan. You know, you need to have those orders, in my opinion, already placed. So if it does dip down, you can hop out and you don't have to ever worry about it. You know, I can't tell you how many times where I've been in a position. I have my stop loss in, the stock hits it, boom, saves me thousands of dollars having a stop loss order. I cannot stress it enough. You know, it, it's super important. The biggest thing with risk management isn't making money, it's preserving your capital. And if you're not doing that, you don't have those orders placed. It's a recipe for disaster. And I, I can't, can't stress it enough. All right, moving on to number nine is chasing trends without confirmation. Obviously, we mentioned it with GameStop, AMC, all those stocks that were skyrocketing up. Where are they now? Where are they now? They're most of the time they're they're pretty much near and around zero, and and during those times, you know, chasing trends is a recipe for disaster. Because once you hear about it, I can't tell you how many times that the move has already been placed. Right, stocks hitting all time highs. You always hear buy low, sell high. Why would you try to buy high and try to sell it higher? It's it's a recipe for. Um, recipe for disaster. Jumping into trades based on trends, you know chasing these trends without waiting for confirmation. So a stock hitting support, maybe consolidating can be very, very risky. It's essential to wait for confirmation, um, you know, uh, signals from a technical analysis to, you know, 
have a higher likelihood of success, I guess is the best way to put it. All right, moving on to the last and final one. This is the best for last, failure to review and learn from your mistakes. Swing trading is a job, you have to treat it like one. Always go back, whether it's your profits, your losses, look what you could have done better on that trade, on that entry to make money. So guys, that's super, super important. Traders who fail to review their trades, identify mistakes and learn from them are likely to repeat them again. So make sure you go back and uh, you review those uh, trades. I can't stress it enough. It's super important. But guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions, by all means, ask. And don't forget to check out my swing trading course. And we will see you guys in the next one. Take care.